The first item before us is House File 29, appropriating money to the Office of the Attorney General to provide legal services for violent crimes and financial exploitation. We have a bill for consideration, House File 29. Representative Hewitt, would you like to move your bill to get it before the committee? Madam Chair, I would. Uh, I would. Uh, uh, yes, I would. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Representative Hewitt moves House File 29 to be recommended to be re-referred to Ways and Means. There is an author's amendment, the DE2. Representative Hewitt, um, would you like to move that amendment before us? Madam Chair, I would. All right. Thank you. Representative Hewitt moves the DE2. Madam Chair. Yes, Representative Nash. Thank you, Madam Chair. If the author would explain the differences between his uh, underlying bill and the DE2, that would be, uh, I believe, custom and usage of our committee in, in the House. Thank you. Representative Hewitt, would you like to speak to the DE2? Madam Chair, I would. Very simply, the DE2 um, simply adds more money to the bill um, to get the, uh, to start the program this year instead of putting it off. It's, this is an urgent matter and we need to move on it. Thank you, Representative Hewitt. Representative Nash. Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, to the author, uh, I also noticed that on line 1.12, uh, I believe that there are some deletions uh, pertaining to <clears throat> serious offenses um, coming out of the bill. Can you explain what uh, you intended when you put serious offenses in and why you're removing it now? Yeah. Madam Chair, I would like to, uh, if we're going to get into this now, I'd like to bring up the AG's office because they assisted on the bill. Thank you, Representative Hewitt. Attorney General Ellison, would you like to join Representative Hewitt at the testifying table? Representative, or excuse me, <laughs> Attorney General Ellison. Madam Chair, um, uh, Vice Chair uh, Hewitt and Representative Nash, I uh, would like to ask to hear the question again. I'm not sure that I understood it uh, when I heard it, although I am listening intently. Maybe, maybe it was sound or something like that. Thank you, Attorney General. Representative Nash. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, Attorney General Ellison, in line 1.12 of the underlying bill before it uh, would be amended, so it is as it sits today, um, there is now a proposed removal of the prosecution of serious offenses, and I was just trying to figure out why that might be. Madam Attorney Chair, General Ellison. Madam Chair, Representative Nash, uh, we at the Attorney General's office only prosecute serious offenses uh, on behalf of counties. If I may remind the, the committee, uh, Minnesota Statute 8.01, which was passed by a previous state legislature is the law that kind of governs how cases come to the Attorney General's office, with the exception of Medicaid fraud cases, which is, are a whole other category. But in the normal course, when counties uh, need our assistance, they contact us. Uh, and if we have resources available, we step up and handle those cases with them or for them based on how they would like to proceed. In the four years that I've been at the Attorney General's office, we've handled overwhelmingly homicide cases. We've had some criminal sexual conduct cases. We recently took in a shaken baby case where an infant survived the encounter but was severely injured and the county asked us to step in because there's some complex medical evidence that will be introduced. So the fact is we never we never do low-level cases. We never do fifth-degree controlled substance cases. We never do low-level theft cases. All, all we ever do are very serious felony cases for which uh, the defendant is facing quite a serious consequence. I, return, I yield back. Thank you, Attorney General. Representative Nash. And thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just trying to ascertain the differences because the morphology of the bill has changed on, uh, the, on the author's DE amendment. In line 1.9, it's picking up, it says, from general fund to the attorney general for enhanced criminal enforcement and related initiatives. You compare that to line 1.12, and it says, uh, necessary assistance with county <clears throat> prosecution of serious offenses. They're, they're two different pieces of language, and I'm just trying to figure out what, what's changed. Because when you came to my office last week, 
uh, and to, to sell me on, on the bill, uh, I understood this to not only be perhaps criminal cases, but also things like waste, fraud, and abuse, and, and other initiatives. And I'm just trying to figure out, and I don't have a copy of Black's Law Dictionary, but only if we had maybe a lawyer that could help us out with the definitional differences here. Okay. I'm trying to figure out why the change in language. Attorney General. Um, Madam Chair, Representative Nash, I think it essentially is a, a drafting issue. It has nothing to do with the content or substance of anything we've been asking for. It is, it, we, we, were, we were working on very serious felonies. We are working on very serious felonies. There simply is no content difference between what we're asking for and what we are asking for now. So I think that it probably has something to do with the way something was drafted at one point, but it has, it, it, there's no, there is no, and I will represent there to the entire uh, uh, committee that there is no content difference. I will say that we are asking for some money earlier uh, when we introduced before, I think the money was in the next fiscal year, we could actually, uh, we could, we, there are counties who've contacted us uh, very recently and we want to be able to meet their needs right away. So we've asked for some money earlier uh, uh, in, you know, so that, uh, so that we can get, get started. But um, I would say that it probably lies in some sort of um, reviser drafting uh, matter. And, I, and I, so that's it, I'll, I'll yield back. Thank and you. Madam uh, Chair. One moment, please. Oh, Madam oh. Chair, if I could. I, I, Mr. I, Gehring would like to speak to the language. Please, Mr. Gehring. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, Representative Nash, um, so I think the reason why the DE2 is drafted the way it, it is because this is language that uh, appeared in the state government bill last year, so it's, it's tracking the same rider kind of structure that mm. has appeared before. Um, so I will leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Gehring. Representative Nash. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was going to remind our, uh, our members that our nonpartisan staff, I, I never attribute something that is a change to uh, to them. It is at the purview of and direction of the author. So mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that we made sure that that was on the record, that we did not say, oh, the drafting change was because of the reviser's mm -hmm. office. It is at the direction of the author through the reviser's office, a very notable change. So thank you, Madam Chair. Um, last question for this before we vote on it, if, you, if I might. I'm sorry, would you please repeat yeah, that statement? If I, if I could ask one more question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, to the author or to the Attorney General, so I just wanted to make sure we're on the record that uh, because even though there is uh, some language changes, uh, this money will still be going to not only be prosecuting, uh, I believe, violent crime, but also waste, fraud, and abuse? Attorney General Ellison. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Representative Nash. So under Minnesota Statute 8.01, which was passed by the state legislature, um, it doesn't say, it doesn't limit the kind of case. So if you look at the language of the statute, it simply says when a county attorney wants to seek the assistance of the attorney general, they may do so. It, so there's no, it doesn't, now our practice is to only take the most serious cases because quite honestly, our staff isn't big enough to, to take low level crimes. There, there have been cases that we've, there, I think there's one case that was a misdemeanor level, but it was an environmental crime. And so it, that had some complicated science involved. So uh, we worked with our, our colleagues there to get that done, but that was the only one. All the other cases uh, have been uh, very serious in terms of uh, the amount of time that the defendant was facing. So, um, so, so to answer your question, Yes, we can certainly uh, do waste, fraud, and abuse uh, prosecutions, uh, but let me just remind the committee, we can't do anything unless the county says we need this help. Now, I will say that a few years ago, this body passed a wage theft law that has criminal components. If we were asked, we certainly would review the matter and if we in help uh, any way that we could. Uh, we are concerned, I, we are very concerned about things like sex and labor trafficking. These things cross county lines often. It would be beneficial for the, the county, to, the, the, the state to be able to assist in those ways. Thank you, Attorney General Ellison. I'm just going to, it's normal practice for us to get the bill in the shape that the author would want. We're not really discussing the merits of, of the underlying bill at this moment. So if we could just please uh, have a vote on adoption of the DE2 to put the bill in the 
uh, condition that the author would want. I'm oh. going to call the vote on the DE2. <laughs> uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 No. All those opposed? No. The motion prevails. The bill is now in the, in the uh, condition of the author's request. Now, <laughs> we can discuss the bill, the DE2. Madam you. Chair? Yes. Did you want to move that other amendment? We, now that we have the bill in the order that you want, we can discuss the other amendment. We do have another amendment. Who is authoring the, the A2? Uh, that would be me, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Nash, to the A2, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, as a preface, the, the author's DE amendment was significantly different, different, and I believe that there was a worthy conversation to be had there, and that mm -hmm. was why my side uh, actually had other questions before you forced the vote, because you're asking us to vote on something that is significantly different. Um, it, it would be, again, custom and usage of our body to ask questions of something uh, even though you may want to put it in the, the form that the author so chooses. So I will move the A2. Mm -hmm. uh, the A2 is a, uh, an amendment that would uh, require the submission of a report onto the efficacy of uh, the money that is being appropriated. I believe uh, at time of drafting, and we may have to uh, go back and amend this to uh, reflect the increase that Representative Hewitt just mentioned, but it's, a, it's essentially asking for a report on how effective was the appropriation of this money uh, as to the number of crimes prosecuted and, uh, and judgments found. So I, I think that I would hope that Representative Hewitt would recognize this as a friendly amendment because if we're going to, uh, if we're going to spend money, we should you know, have a, those, those silly pedestrian ideas of, of measuring how we did as we appropriate money. And uh, I would request a roll call. A roll call having been requested, we will have a roll call. Representative Hewitt. Thank you, uh, Representative Nash and Madam Chair. Um, looking at that, again, it seems very general and it seems like you went towards a specific area there. So I would recommend a no vote on the amendment. Thank you. And um, Representative Nadeau, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Um, not on this amendment. Thank you. Representative Bonner. Just briefly, um, uh, thank you, Attorney General Ellison, for being here. Um, I think recently we actually saw a report that outlined all of the cases that your office handled, and it also addressed the outcomes of those cases. Um, it was not specific to fraud, waste, and abuse, but rather an overall um, full view of all of the cases that have run through your office. Is that not correct? <coughs> Madam Chair. Rep uh, excuse me, Attorney General Ellison. Uh, Representative Boehner, uh, you are absolutely correct. It's called the 8.15 report. It's an annual report. It's statutorily required. We issue the report every year. Uh, uh, additional reporting requirements for this money would not add to uh, the knowledge, wisdom, information that uh, is already available. Thank you, and I would like to remind the audience and the committee members that that A15 report was posted to the committee's agenda today. Representative Nash. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, uh, I'm disappointed that Representative Hewitt has decided to pursue uh, the deflection of this. It, we're, we're being asked to come into committee early in the session with a sense of urgency to appropriate new money for the Attorney General's office. Um, I think that the, the taxpayers of the state of Minnesota would like to understand, uh, you know, what level of, of accountability and return uh, that this money is going to, to yield because it's not just 2.021, it's, you know, it, that is a, a one-year number, but the biennial number is 4042000 um, That's not an insignificant amount of money, Madam Chair, and I think that it is not untoward of us to ask for a report for something that is being fast-tracked. Um, and I, I chose waste, fraud, and abuse because um, there have been some fairly high-profile cases of waste, fraud, and abuse that have come to the Attorney General's office that uh, did not uh, come out on the affirmative, as he claims on a regular basis. He doesn't lose. Uh, he was engaged by the Department of Education uh, for a case of waste, fraud, and abuse, and uh, that wound up uh, not being settled by his office, the money had to be returned, and I think that there is a bevy of questions that 
the average taxpayer would like to ask, uh, and I think a report would be uh, a very good use of that time. Representative, uh, Attorney General Ellison, would you like to comment? Yeah, um, Chair Cleborn, um, Representative Nash, um, this matter that you're referring to uh, has a, a lot of facts associated with it, which I would be very happy to discuss with anyone. But the main thing that's important to understand, if this was federal money and the case was prosecuted by the United States Attorney's Office successfully, over 50 indictments, many people have already pled guilty or, been, or about to be found guilty, and people are being held accountable. As soon as fraud came to our attention through this program, which was not Minnesota money, it was federal money, uh, it was, it was, the source of it was from the federal government, we alerted uh, the, the U.S. attorney, the federal authorities, cooperated with them and obtained indictments, and those people are being prosecuted right now. So it's simply, so what we're talking about today and that issue, are, they couldn't be more apples and oranges. They're simply different. And we wouldn't prosecute those cases in any case because it's federal money violating the federal statute on a federal program, and it is appropriate for the federal authorities to prosecute those cases. I yield back. Thank you, Attorney General. We have three members who are asking um, uh, for questions. I hadn't quite finished. Madam. One more, please, and then I'll move to the next representative. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, Attorney General Ellison, I do appreciate the fact that you're, you say that you're willing to talk to anybody. Um, I, I'm, I would imagine that you also would uh, speak to Representative Cresha, who on November 2nd of 2022 sent your office a fairly detailed letter, and we have extra copies if you need one, um, again, asking you a long number of detailed questions. Um, as I understand it, Attorney General Ellison, the, the money that was sent to your office as a retainer to defend the Department of Education was Minnesota money, not federal money. Uh, and I just think, again, back to the underlying amendment that I'm trying to put onto the bill, we're asking for a level of accountability that because you are asking for money in an expeditious manner, we are also asking for something that is perhaps outside of your norm. But I also know that it is not a crazy idea to say, let's, let's see how it does. You know, in the private sector, we have Six Sigma and Lean and Kaizen. If we're going to give something some, some capital and we're going to put something behind it, we should measure it to see if it's being successful. And I think that a report is a very fine way to do that. So, um, you know, and as to the, the being willing to speak with anybody, I would strongly urge you to reach back out to Representative Cresha because that, that uh, letter is, is now quite old. Representative Nash, if you have a letter that you're going to reference in yep. committee, I would ask I that up, you I, please I make sure that all members have it and that we have it in advance. Yep. If this is an old letter, certainly you would have had time to submit it. We would have had time to review it, and then we could have a full discussion about that letter. We Since can, we I haven't it seen it, I'm, we are going to move on. The next representative, Representative Joy, to your question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Say a couple of questions. I'm a new freshman to the uh, legislator representing up northwest Minnesota. What is the metric for success for the Attorney General's office? Question one. Number two, what measurable outcomes does the additional funding hope to achieve? Attorney General Ellison, if you'll keep this brief, we did have an overview of your office earlier where this question could have also have been asked. Please, please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. The outcomes are representing the people of the state of Minnesota, representing the agents of, agencies of the state of Minnesota, uh, and serving on various boards. Uh, the Office of the Attorney General's Office is in the Constitution of the, of the state of Minnesota. Uh, it's a constitutional office, and the people who frame the Constitution of the state like all of the other states, uh, viewed the importance of the Attorney General's office as important. It dates back from till, till, the till the 11th century in England. It's a very old traditional office, and it's to represent the people of the of the of the area and the and the agencies of that operate in the, in the state of government. Uh, I believe your your other question is a, is an interesting one. I mean, be, so when someone is murdered, or robbed, or killed, or raped. What we do as a civilized society is we hold those people accountable. Um, the measure of success is whether we identify the people who committed, com committed the act, whether we hold them accountable within the Constitution, and whether we give them appropriate sentence for their conduct. That is really the measure of success. It's, 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 uh, it's interesting because 
achieving justice for victims um, is, is not a matter of profit and loss. It's a matter of human beings suffering and having some level of accountability from their government. I yield back. Thank you, Attorney General. The next question is from Representative Herr. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Attorney General Keith Ellison. I know that your office has actually done quite a bit. I'm just curious as to, I think you might have pre uh, provided this information already, but how much has your office saved the state of Minnesota? Uh, Attorney General. Madam Chair, uh, I think the last number we had was well over a billion dollars. When you add up uh, everything, mm -hmm. uh, we, we certainly, um, return far more value to the state than we actually draw from the state coffers. So, uh, and, and again, you know, to a certain extent, it's not even, it, it, it can't be measured easily in a dollars and cents because if you have, if you are the parent of someone or the child of someone, one of the cases that we had involved a former Minnesota Viking, Barry Bennett and his wife who were murdered by their child, to the siblings of that family, if you try to, talk about the value that the Attorney General brought by prosecuting that case, it simply does not fit in on a balance sheet very well. It's like I needed, we needed to know that the person who took everything from us uh, is, is standing in account for that. And so uh, that, that's my best answer to you. Yeah, in dollars and cents, over a billion dollars. In terms of people's fit, sense that there's justice done, I, I don't think that that's a calculable number. Thank you, back. Attorney General. I would like to just remind us, uh, Representative Kosnick, you have a question, but I just want to remind everyone we are discussing the merits of the A2 amendment. Thank you. This will be the last question before we call the Ma vote. Madam Chair, can I just uh, follow really quick, real quick? I just Please. wanted to say, uh, Madam Representative Chair. Representative Herr. Uh, uh, Attorney General Keith Ellison, thank you so much. And as somebody who comes from a for-profit, uh, uh, the private sector and does no balance sheet and does no return investment, this is, uh, for the amount that is being asked, it is a phenomenal return on investment, and we appreciate uh, the work that your office has done, and we also understand that as people from marginalized communities, we feel like this is the first time our voices have been heard in the cases that you are taking on and what you are taking on very seriously, and want to make sure that this committee understands the difference in the work that you have done versus other uh, attorney generals in this space, even though our attorney generals always do a great job, you have done a phenomenal job in ensuring that the community is represented and the issues that impact us from the diverse communities is also lifted up and worked on and the return on the investment on this is enormous and appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Representative Chair, Thank Her. you, Representative Her. Representative Kosnick. Well, I appreciate you recognizing me, Madam Chair, but uh, in fact, I did not have a question. I Maybe I was helping Representative Joy get recognized. Thank you so much. Uh, Representative Hewitt to the A2. I just recommend a no vote. Thank you. A roll call having been requested, the CLA will please take the roll. Chair Cleavorn? No. Cleavorn, no. Vice Chair Hewitt? No. Hewitt, no. Lead Nash? Yes, please. Nash, aye. Representative Bonner? No. Bonner, no. Representative Berg? No. Berg, no. Representative Freiburg? No. Freiburg, no. Representative Hansen? No. Hansen, no. Representative Harder? Yes. Harder, aye. Representative Her? No. Her, no. Representative Joy? Aye. Joy, aye. Representative Kosnick? Aye. Kosnick, aye. Representative Nadeau? Aye. Nadeau, aye. Representative Newton? No. Newton, no. Madam Chair, that's five ayes and eight nays. With a vote of five ayes and eight nays, the motion does not prevail. The A2 is not adopted. Representative Hewitt, to the underlying bill, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, committee members. Um, good discussions earlier here. Uh, the reason I, I was happy to uh, help with this bill was one of the projects everybody knows from this committee that I'm working on is emergency medical services, which is a portion of public safety. And what I'm running into is in the rural areas that there is no funding, period. You go to the counties, you go to the places where they get their money and they're just, the, the pump is dry. And uh, it, it's, it's real hard out there to, to do anything with public safety or EMS or fire. And um, this was a total afterthought of what do they do in the prosecutor's office when they got to uh, 
when they got to uh, deal with the bad people. So um, I was really uh, receptive to this. I'm really happy. I also have had the AG work in my own area a couple times for some bad players out there and they've done a fantastic job. Um, and, and it's not always to the prosecution level, it's to maybe give a little reminder here and there. So um, I, I'm real happy to carry this and this bill is firmly about public safety and getting the bad guy and using the state's largest law office to take care of that when our own counties cannot afford to do it at this time. Thank you, Representative Hewitt. Um, sure. One moment, please. Would you like for your testifier now or after questions? I would, uh, I think we move forward to questions. I think we covered a lot of stuff already, so. Perfect, thank you very much. Representative Harder. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Representative, uh, you mentioned about counties were looking for help on some of these cases. Why well, I did reach out, I live in the rural area, I did reach out to attorneys in my um, district and one of the responses that came back was that we are capable of handling matters ourselves and are not in need of the Attorney General's uh, assistance. I was basically asking how often do you reach out for assistance? And that particular um, county attorney. Thank you. We do have uh, Robert Small here from the, he is the executive director of the Minnesota County Attorneys Association. Mr. Small, if you would like to address the question, please identify yourself for the record. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I am sorry I did not hear the full question. Uh, I should identify myself first. My name is Robert Small. I'm the Executive Director of the Minnesota County Attorneys Association. Representative Harder, if you'd like to briefly restate your question. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Robert Small. So if it was a question, so I had reached out to a couple of the county attorneys that are in my district questioning how often do you reach out to the attorney general's office for assistance and one of them did respond back saying that uh, that they do not rarely or I should say rarely and that they are capable of handling what comes before them on their own so I, I just question uh, the letter that you had sent about all the counties that are using this assistance. Do we have any data as to how often counties are reaching out for your assistance? Help me understand. I mean, if you have the data when <laughs> counties are reaching out, I would like to see that, please. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Mr. Um, Small. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, uh, Representative Harder. Uh, I do not have the data. Uh, the Attorney General uh, might have the data. Um, what I can say is there are other letters from other county attorneys. I'm not sure, Madam uh, Representative Harder, which district you're from, so I'm not sure which counties you're talking about. Um, but uh, the Attorney General might have some information about how often we do that. Thank you, Attorney General. Madam Chair, Representative Harder, uh, I'd just like to share with you that we do have a criminal division of the Minnesota Attorney General's Office that in the past three years, uh, with the prosecutors that we have. Uh, we've made charging decisions and prosecuted 33 cases of murder, manslaughter, vehicular homicide, criminal sexual conduct at the request of county attorneys. Um, and uh, we, we haven't lost any of those cases. Uh, our office, um, by the way, we've uh, 18 of the 20 counties where the criminal division has handled these matters are in greater Minnesota. So there are 87 counties, it is possible that 100% of them have not called us. Uh, but I can tell you that we have received calls in 20 counties. And I think it's a good thing that you haven't had a lot of calls because that means there weren't that many murders, you know. And, and so that, that's probably not a bad thing, but I think it's a good thing that we're there and available. If they want to call us, we're more than happy to help. I, re I yield back. Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Nadeau, did you have a question? <clears throat> Thank you, um, Madam Chair, and thank you, um, Representative Hewitt, for bringing this bringing this up. This is uh, this is important as we, you know, violent crime is 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 up there, and I'm glad that that we're that we're looking at this. My questions have to do with the office itself. I I wanna I wanna start there. Um, what 
your criminal division you've mentioned a couple of times. Um, can you give me the, n like the, the ballpark numbers on the number of lawyers you have and investigators in the criminal division, and then compare that to consumer protection, for example? That's been a big, big focus, um, way even before you. I mean, you know, um, Attorney General Hatch um, kind of brought that up year years and years ago. Can you give me just a better understanding of of those two divisions and the lawyers in those and the investigators in those and the focus of your office. I would like to remind the committee that we are discussing the bill before us and please I'll ask that uh, when we're wording our questions to make sure that they're relevant to the bill. But I do appreciate this question and I will permit it. H.G. Ellison, please. Madam Chair, um, the consumer division is substantially larger than our trial court prosecution group. Our consumer division uh, is um, is one that handles everything from antitrust uh, matters to consumer fraud to all kinds of things, and it is substantially larger. When I got to the attorney general's office, there was one full time district, full time trial court level prosecutor. <clears throat> there were more prosecutors who did uh, did appellate work, and there were more prosecutors than that that did uh, involuntary commitments for sexually dangerous predators. Uh, and then, of course, we have a whole division that does imply consent, which is when people on the roadway commit a DUI, for example. It's not just a criminal matter. It's also a civil matter in terms of their license. So that's in our criminal division, too. We've now gone up, we've gone up to three full-time criminal prosecutors. Uh, we have more people than that who will take a case. But in terms of people who that's all they do and they do it well, we started with one. Now we have three. And we're at the point where if we move that up, we're going to lose on other end. And I mention that to you because it is <clears throat> public safety that consumer lawyers do. They're the ones, the consumer lawyers are the ones who have, retur <clears throat> have returned millions of dollars back for the opioid cases, for example. Uh, in one case, they got 290 million. Another one, we, we're working on one that has 235 million. This money will go to treatment. This money will go to help people get well. But also, a wage theft, that's, that's a criminal in nature. And then also, uh, the work we've done with, uh, uh, on, in housing. We know housing is, is uh, good, solid housing, keeps people out of the space of the criminal justice system. So the, 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 the consumer fraud stuff is not uh, exclusive from public safety, but it's not criminal prosecution either. Thank you, Attorney General. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair, and, and uh, I am going Excuse directly. Me, Representative Nadeau, I'm going to ask you to wrap up because we uh, we have some time constraints this morning. Representative Hewitt is being requested in another committee as well, so we need to make sure that we have the vote on the bill. And I want to give Rep. Lee Nash time to wrap up. Okay. So this goes directly to the spending in this bill, Madam Chair. Then please. Ask you know me. what I'm trying to determine is whether or not. Um, consumer protection attorneys can be moved into criminal. I mean, and, and maybe they don't have that background, but is there no efficiencies in that office where, you know, the focus has been on, on, criminal, uh, on, on consumer protection almost exclusively? I mean, your own, your own testimony says you've only three, you've got three lawyers um, doing this work. And I'm assuming that there's, you know, a significantly higher number of uh, consumer protection attorneys um, how is it that we can come at this point and say, you know what, our focus needs to be criminal, but we don't have any lawyers, we need more money, rather than looking at the, in, at, at the efficiencies in the office to find that? Thank you, Representative Nadeau, and I'd like to remind uh, that this is not the first time you've made this request. Um, and I'd like to thank Representative Hewitt and you, AG, for being persistent in making sure that violent crime is addressed in our state. Please would you give a brief response so that we can move on to Lee Nash. Madam Chair, the Attorney General's office representative is, is supposed to do what we have statutorily required to work on certain things. The statutes passed by the legislature require us to work on residential utilities. That's in the consumers. Require us to work on charities matters. That's in the statutes. Require us to, to work in the area of consumer. And uh, the Minnesota Statute 8.01, you know, says that the counties can come to us when they need help. They need help. That's why the, the, the executive director of the counties is here. Uh, and so the, re the real issue is that we've, we have seen in the last 20 years 
uh, essentially a flat line in terms of nominal dollars and a significant reduction in terms of real dollars in the last 20 years. And so we used to simply do more than we used to do because we had more to do it with. We've uh, not, we've not done anything to meet the you know, litigation is more complicated. The population of the state has increased and yet the budget of the AG's office is not. So that's really where it comes from. And you know, on this issue of efficiency, I just want to be, just want to let you know, you're right. We should always look for efficiencies. Actually, Representative Nash and I had a good conversation about, do, about that. But when a victim is saying, my loved one was murdered, it's just very difficult to say, we would love to help you, but you know, it's just not in the budget. So, I mean, we, you, we've got to respond to that. You know, this is, if we were talking about light fixtures and stuff like that, or road costs, yeah, absolutely more efficient. We're talking about justice. Still, I think it's a little different. I yield back. Thank you, Attorney General. <coughs> Lead Nash. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. To the author of the bill and, and to the Attorney General, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not denying that there are needs uh, from a prosecutorial perspective. I, I do recognize that there are uh, a fair amount of bad actors out there in both the uh, you know, murder, but also waste, fraud, and abuse. And you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom of the value that we're going to be able to impart to the people of the state of Minnesota, with whom your office is funded with their money. And I don't think anybody disagrees with that. My problem is that um, wouldn't wouldn't listen to the amendment, wouldn't listen to the argument, um, and you know, the the 500 million that was uh, sent uh, to engage on behalf of feeding our future. Uh, I don't, I don't, I hope that you can provide better value than you did with that. Um, you know, I'm I'm still curious as to how much of that was spent on on lawyers' fees internally before it was sent back to the DOE. Um, because that's all Minnesotans' money. It's not yours, it's not mine. It belongs to the people who populate the state around us. Uh, but I, I have deep concerns about this. Uh, I am looking forward to another full-throated conversation once this makes it to Ways and Means. Um, I will be voting no on this um, because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of interest in working together on this. Um, <clears throat> came with an, with an honest amendment that uh, was offered in good faith um, that was rejected. And as a result of that, we'll, be, uh, we'll have more full-throated conversations. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, and Representative Hewitt, if you'll quickly wrap up. And Madam we'll Chair, I would request a roll call on the underlying bill. A, re a roll call has been requested. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, committee members, and thank you, uh, Lead Nash, for the spirit of the debate. And as we go forward, I look forward to your comments. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I'd like to move to a vote. Thank you. And with no further discussion, uh, Representative Hewitt, uh, you, re -renew, you renew your motion to recommend House File 29 as amended to be re-referred to the Ways and Means Committee. Is that correct? That is correct, Madam Chair. Thank you. Will the CLA please take the vote? Chair Cleavorn. Aye. Cleavorn, aye. Vice Chair Hewitt. Aye. Hewitt, aye. Lead Nash. Nope. Nash, no. Representative Bonner. Adley, yes. Bonner, aye. Representative Berg. Aye. Berg, aye. Representative Freiburg. Yes. Freiburg, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Harder. No. Harder, no. Representative Her. Aye. Her, aye. Representative Joy. No. Joy, no. Representative Kosnick. No. Kosnick, no. Representative Nadeau. No. Nadeau, no. Representative Newton. Aye. Newton, aye. Madam Chair, that's eight ayes and five nays. Thank you. Um, the ayes have it. The motion prevails. House File 29, as amended, is recommended to be re-referred to the Ways and Means Committee.